Hello, this is Murray Sully, your OPS 435 instructor. Just wanted to give you this YouTube video to show you how your assignment number two shell script should behave. Uh, a couple of things here before we get underway. The Zenity command is a graphical command that automatically displays dialog boxes that's on your system. In order for you to use it, you have to literally be chained to the graphical Linux system, i.e. desktop, along with your shell in order to use it. This kind of makes sense. When you use the Zenity command, it's going to place up onto your desktop these lovely dialog boxes that make it user-friendly for people to work with your shell scripts. Unfortunately, there's a price to be paid with this. It means you cannot be remotely connected to your matrix system from home. Why? Because your SSH application doesn't handle the capability to display graphical objects. And although it is possible to configure servers to allow this on other systems, it doesn't work on your matrix system. This means that you have to, one, either keep working on your assignment in your, uh, at the college, in the uh, computer labs, uh, logged into graphical Linux, or install um, a Linux distribution at, on your home computer and complete your assignment, and then when it comes time to uh, submitting your assignment, transfer it over to your matrix account. Okay, I want to show you right now how this uh, application works. I have just uh, opened up a shell, and my work is under the subdirectory test scripts, or test script, I should say. Um, never assume that uh, I'm going to test out your uh, work in a particular directory. I could put it into any directory. I don't want you to get caught up on to assuming where the database files are. You don't know. So I could use a relative path name, or I could use an absolute path name, and it'll work for me. Um, don't worry about me testing out your work with relative to home path names. I simply won't use them. There are some files here for my demonstration. I have the shell script, makepayments.bash, and it has executable permissions. And I have several database files. Uh, two of them are actually valid for field colon separated databases, purchases.dat, and vendor.dat, just to show you that I could test this stuff out as long as it was valid with different file names because we don't know what file names the purchases department are going to use. We're just concentrated on the consistent format that they use. And here's another one. It's a valid file. It's just three, fi uh, three fields instead of four. I'll never test work with inconsistent number of uh, fields in the database, like some records having three fields, some records having two fields, some records having four fields. You can always assume for this assignment, I'll test with different file fields, but they'll always be consistent. And we want to um, choose the ones that are the consistent four-field uh, database uh, um, formats. Okay, let me show you how this command works. So I'm going to run makepayments.bash, and I'm going to execute it incorrectly because it does require one argument, only one argument. So here we've uh, displayed an error message, but graphically now using the zenity command. We don't have to worry about redirecting output to standard error because uh, graphically um, the system doesn't understand what standard error is. So it's an error message and we're just giving a heads up to the user that, oh, I need to issue the, uh, the shell script with one argument. Click OK, it exits with a false exit status. Run it again, I'll run it incorrectly again with two arguments, and again, I get that error message indicating, no, we need to run the shell script with just one argument. Click OK, it exits with a, a false exit status. Run it again, and this time I am going to run it with only one file name, but one that's non existent. For example, nofile.txt. And in the error message, it indicates that that's not a regular file. More specifically, it doesn't exist, but that's okay. It prevented the, uh, my shell script from using it. Click OK, and that will exit with a false exit status. I'm going to run it again, but I'm going to run it again with the wrong file, that three field file uh, format. Um, and it indicates this is not a four field colon separated database file. So it's three fields, not four fields. Again, it, it uh, prevents any problems from uh, coming into our system and exits with a full exit status. Just taking a look at the purchases database file that is valid, um, it consists of four fields the vendor number, the vendor name, the date of purchase or the last date of purchase, and the outstanding balance. 
We don't worry about adding in purchases. The purchasing department does that. They have a, someone or a program to do that already. What we want to do and what we want to focus on are just taking this information and displaying reports and uh, also having the ability to uh, make payments uh, either full or impartial against an outstanding balance. You can always assume there'll only be one record um, that's unique for each uh, vendor and if a lot of purchases are made for that vendor, the purchases department just keeps on growing this amount that's here and may update the, the last date of, uh, of purchase. Okay, let's run this uh, program now with a valid file. And now you see it brings up a menu item and there's a number of things that we can select and then click OK. Uh, so I'll just display all the purchases to date and it brings up a lovely little dialog box showing all of the balances and the total balance and also indicating that a report has actually been saved. Um, in my home directory under purchase report.txt. Uh, you may notice that the alignment's out of whack here, and that's because with this entity command, it doesn't understand uh, how to deal with white spaces or spaces um, when using the printf command. Okay, uh, just to prove to you that the file has been indeed saved into my home directory under that uh, directory listing, if I do cat, There it is, here's the same report, except it is aligned up perfectly with the printf command. Okay, so it does give you an example. So although um, with the problem with Zenity, I'm, um, I'm accepting this, I will be checking the extra um, uh, file printout and making sure that that's consistent and that aligns up properly. If you click on close, it brings back the menu again, so it should indicate that this menu is looped over and over again until I click exit. Uh, let's uh, make a payment, so I'll go to make a payment. It says please enter an existing vendor name. If I type in a portion of a name, um, it won't work. It'll indicate there's no match. It forces me to type in the exact spelling, upper lowercase sensitivity, everything. So I have to type in exactly Robbie's robot prepare and then when it does it brings up another dialog box that confirms the name and the outstanding balance and in this way I can make a payment in this case I'll just make a partial payment of $300 you can assume for this um, assignment that uh, you aren't working in cents it's not very realistic but it's quite a large assignment and I didn't want to add in any further complications or complexity so click on OK, and now it should have actually updated that balance. If I go to Display Purchases, you will see now that Robbie's Robot Repair has an outstanding balance of $200 instead of $500, because we made a $300 payment. Click on Close, brings up the menu item again. If I go to Contact Vendor, this is just a report displaying um, items uh, that are still outstanding over $500. Really a flag to indicate if there's some major problems, uh, maybe we can uh, uh, get in contact with the uh, vendor. It should show actually the uh, telephone number there um, uh, from the database uh, file that I, I show. So you can actually phone up the, the vendor and uh, communicate with them, make sure they're not getting angry at us because we have made a payment. Uh, another important thing uh, to realize is that uh, we can make full payments, and if we do make full payments, uh, that it can remove the uh, balance for the, um, for the vendor. So for example, Frankie's Repair Shop, um, no apostrophe there, uh, has an outstanding balance of $250. I click on here. If I make a payment, I type in Frankie's Repair Shop. Indicates the name and the balance. If I type, try, try to type in $300, indicates that it exceeds that balance. I can't pay it more than it's worth. So I'm going to say $250. Now if we display purchases, we'll notice that Frankie's uh, repair shop is no longer there. I'm just going to go through some more here. Let's look at Sandra's counseling service, $500. Let's make a payment, uh, make a payment there. Sandra's counseling service. It shows a balance of $500. Let's make a full payment against that. Let's display the purchases, and it's removed as well. Let's remove the two other ones just to see what happens. Make a 
payment. Annie Marie's Dance Academy. $1,500. Let's make a full payment on that. Obviously, it's removed. And the last one is Robbie's Robot Report Repair for $200. Make a payment on that. Balance is two hundred dollars. And we display there's nothing there. There are no lines, but it does do a total a total and tally that there is zero dollars remaining. Make sure to uh, error check for uh, valid integers that are entered into the system as well. Um, and that's about it. When it comes time to actually exit the uh, assignment, or exit your shell script, I should say, then you click onto the exit uh, button, click OK. It should uh, remove all temporary files. It should also uh, exit with a true exit status. So this is Murray Saul for OPS 435, just showing you how getting you a heads up on how your assignment to shell script should work. Have a nice day.